Hello and warm welcome. You're tuned in to Iron Africa. I'm Rochelle ferguson Biahi. These are the top stories on the continent. In the latest violence to Rock Mali, a Chinese UN peacekeeper and three members of a UN demining unit have been killed in the country's northern uh, region of Gao. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has called for the perpetrators to be brought to justice. Experts sound the alarm over pollution from mining in DR Congo's southern region. Toxic waste is being blamed for environmental damage and health problems. And Nigeria's deteriorating economy sees 60% uh, of the country's foreign car imports plummet. One car plant, though, says the news is good for Nigerian businesses. But first, militants from Somalia's Al-Shabaab group have claimed responsibility for a car bomb outside a hotel that killed at least 15 people, including two MPs, and wounded dozens in the capital Mogadishu today. Well, Somalia militants uh, detonated the explosion outside a hotel ambassador, with one police officer suggesting fighters could still be holed up on the premises. Authorities, meanwhile, have warned the death toll is almost certain to rise. One witness described what he saw. I screamed for help because there were many people who were under the rubble and they were begging for help or otherwise calling for ambulances. Well, staying with Somalia, officials in the Jubiland region say the suspected mastermind of the attacks on Kenya's Garissa University, that was last April, have been killed alongside four others. According to reports, Al-Shabaab's Mohamed Duliadan, alias Kunu, died uh, during an operation by troops from Somalia and uh, Jubiland. In other news on the continent, the UN has confirmed a Chinese peacekeeper and three members from one of its demining units have been killed following a mortar attack in the country's north. Well, the attack hit a munisma camp in the town of Gao. That was late on Tuesday night. It's the most recent in a string of assaults in the West African nation. UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon has called for the perpetrators to be brought to justice. France 24's Nicolas Germain reports. It's the first time a Chinese peacekeeper is killed in northern Mali. A suicide vehicle targeted the UN camp in Gao. He turned his lights off, slowed down and suddenly accelerated. All we know for now is that a vehicle entered and hit the wall protecting the camp. There was a violent explosion, one person was killed and three others were wounded. Al-Qaeda and the Islamic Maghreb claim responsibility for the attack. More specifically, it said members of jihadist Mokhtab al-Mokhtar's group had carried it out. Another attack in Gao killed three civilians working for the UN, two Malians and one Frenchman. Gao residents are increasingly worried. We don't feel safe. I don't understand how a vehicle filled with explosives can enter a country that is supposedly safe. You really don't feel safe here in Gao. The jihadists' latest attacks have been particularly deadly. Last month, in less than two weeks, 11 peacekeepers were killed. Since July 2013, 74 UN soldiers have died following hostile actions by jihadists. In neighbouring Burkina Faso, authorities say unidentified gunmen have killed three policemen in the country's north. That's close to the Malian border. Well, officials said the officers were set upon at a police station in Intamgong, a village which is situated about five kilometres from the frontier. After the attack, up to four suspects are believed to have fled back across the border to Mali. The assault was the second to hit a police station in under a fortnight. Two officers were wounded in a similar attack. That was on May 17th. We head to uh, DR Congo's southern mining region next, where experts say the ecosystem is suffering major damage owing to pollution caused by mining waste. Well, toxic metals and uh, other chemicals are being blamed not solely for devastating the environment, but also for health complaints among adults and some birth defects. France 24's Alexander Alcott reports. The Catapula River is now void of life. It is just 30 kilometres from the Democratic Republic of Congo's second city and mining capital, Lubumbashi. While the country has the highest level of biodiversity in Africa, here... Acids, heavy metals and other pollutants have made it impossible for the fish to survive. 
and now experts are warning about the health effects on people living close by. We've studied human contamination by transmetallic elements which come from the mining industry. And we found that people who live close to mining activity, especially those living less than three kilometers away, are the most affected. They have high concentration of toxic metals in their bodies. Copper mining has been taking place here for over a thousand years, but modern industrialized methods have created dust and pollution that's impossible to avoid. It's always dirty in living rooms. The dust here, where there are acids, penetrates kitchens and affects food as well, which makes people ill. Local doctors have reported increasing cases of birth defects, such as babies born with large parts of their skulls and brains missing. We have high rates of congenital malformations and microcephaly, which are diseases linked to pollution. Despite being Africa's most water-rich country, DR Congo faces a crisis according to the UN Environment Programme, with around 51 million people lacking access to safe drinking water. The trial for Uganda's opposition leader, Kiza Besije, kicked off today, but was postponed after the prosecutor said Besije couldn't be brought to court due to security reasons. The long-time opponent of President Yaweri Museveni was uh, arrested and charged with treason back in May after holding a mock swearing-in ceremony. It came after he cited fraud in February's presidential elections. But CJ is currently being detained at a top security prison in the capital, Kampala. His supporters have condemned the charges. It's absurd. It's not surprising because uh, the path that... Uh, General Museveni and the regime have chosen to take over a period of time. It's just building, you know, getting worse and worse. It's just a symptom of a bigger problem that exists within the regime itself. Egyptian authorities say they've ordered an immediate investigation into claims that one of its officials referred to sub-Saharan Africans as dogs and slaves. Kenyan diplomat Yvonne Kemati, allegedly unnamed official, made the comments at an environmental conference in Nairobi. Kemati has called for Egypt to be banned from representing African interests and to apologise unreservedly to Africa. Egypt says that thus far it appears no such language was used by its representative. And finally, Nigeria's deteriorating economic situation has seen the country's foreign car imports plummet by at least 60 per cent. Well, there are currently only four major car plants in Africa's most popular nation. All are struggling to meet the demands for car parts. One of the plants is owned by Africa's first car maker, Innocent Motors. France 24's Rosie Collier and Moise Katumbe sent us this report. These car lovers meet every Sunday in the capital of Abuja to show off their drifting skills. All the cars are imported, mainly from Germany and Japan. But with the reduced supply of foreign exchange imposed by the Central Bank of Nigeria in a bid to prop up the local currency, it is getting harder to find spare parts. We find it very difficult with the high exchange rate, but we have no choice because of the loaf we have for that spot. So we are still doing it, but it's very, very hard this time around. The fall in imports of foreign cars has been good for business here at Innocent Motors. Do another round of check before it passes your stage, okay? And the fuse boxes also. They're all there. Did yes. you check the electrical wiring? Are they in order? Yes. Before you start your own parts, yes. it's okay. Well done. Well done. An expansion of the factory is underway to help meet rising demand. Presently, we're enjoying an increment of about 300%. That's going by statistics of the sales. Yeah. Looking back at what happened previously and then the present uh, time. The largest orders come from the public sector, including the police and schools. Community engagement is a key strategy of Innocent Motors CEO. Okay. How are you? In a region where poverty and youth unemployment are high, Innocent Motors is one of the few places that offers on-the-job training. I'm training people on skill positions so that they can do on themselves. Like anywhere now we open a service station, we just employ people from our training center. Other people open, they come here and pick people. The important thing is that they are learning the job. 
That thing now, somebody can employ them anywhere in the world. While Innocent Motors is taking full advantage of the drop in foreign car imports, it still has a long way to go before it can convince consumers that made in Nigeria is a mark of quality. Rosie Collier and uh, Moise Gomez uh, reporting for us. They're very much up to date. Coming up next, more international headlines. You're watching France 24. Mm -hmm.